Today's episode is all about emergency funds. Let's get started. We all know that unexpected things happen. And if it's an unforeseen medical expense or a sudden job loss, whatever it is, ex emergencies can be costly. This is where emergency funds come into play. So what is an emergency fund? It's basically a stash of money that you set aside for unexpected expenses. It typically covers three to six months of your living expenses. So it's important because it helps you avoid debt and financial stress that happens during that time. Hello and welcome or welcome back. My name is Wendy Coop and I'm the Savvy Budget Girl. Thank you for tuning into the podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by me and my book, Budgeting for Women. It is a simple five-step budgeting guide to get your finances in order. So order your copy today from Amazon. The link is in the description or show notes. So let's get back to it. How do you build an emergency fund? Well, I've got five steps for you. The first step is to set a savings goal that is realistic for you in your household. Now, some of you have may have heard the term SMART goals, and basically SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. That's what SMART stands for. So in setting this realistic goal for your emergency fund, what we want to see happen is that, you know, if you make $20,000 a year, it may not be realistic for you to have an emergency fund of $60,000. That may not make sense right now. However, that $60,000 may make sense if you make $200,000 a year. But that's why we go through the budgeting exercise so that we know exactly or roundabout exactly how much we need in our emergency fund. The next thing you want to look at when you're setting your savings goal is what would constitute what we call a bare bones budget. That simply means that you're going to take your expenses and cut them down to the bare minimum. What does it take for you to have shelter, transportation, food, and just basic living necessities during an emergency, such as a job loss? So you may be looking at that for three months, six months, or a year, depending on the stability of your job and your income sources. But the important thing is, is that it doesn't necessarily need to include things like your Netflix subscription or your Hulu subscription or YouTube live TV, not picking on those services. But if you are in the midst of an emergency or a job loss, then all your time and attention or the majority of your time and attention needs to go towards dealing with that emergency. And yes, I know that Netflix is a good distraction, but you know what? They have movies at the library and the library is free, you guys. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> if you need to turn off Netflix for a few months, it is not the end of the world. I promise you. I turn off Hulu all the time and I have live TV and I don't have cable. Um, I don't even have an antenna on my TV to get over the air channels. So just know that you may even find out that when you do this bare bones budget, you're not really looking at those streaming services anyway, or at least not all 10 that you're paying for. So look into that bare bones budget and don't forget to include things like groceries, your transportation costs, things that are variable each month. So if you have something that's variable each month, like transportation costs or groceries, I would err on the side of too much rather than too little. So if your typical grocery budget is about $400, well then in your bare bones budget that it, it needs to be $400 rather than assuming that you're going to eat less for some reason and only giving yourself $250 for eating. Unless that grocery budget for some reason included eating out, which we'll talk about later. So make sure you account for those um, things that you would normally have a sinking fund for as well, like car maintenance. Um, so just because you're in the midst of an emergency, it doesn't mean you don't still take care of things like insurance, car maintenance, things like that. So if you've got a sinking fund for it currently, make sure you look at those sinking funds and determine which will still need to be funded during your emergency and put those into the budget. 
And then finally, as we wrap up step one, which is the realistic savings goal, I want you to look at only doing one month of expenses as your savings goal to start with. This is if you have debt. So if you've got debt, what I want you to do is just pay the minimum payments on your debt and focus your energy on creating one month of living expenses based on that bare bones budget that you just created. So that way you don't have money going in 50 other places. You just have the money that is dedicated for your emergency fund. And then after you get a month of expenses, then go back to putting your attention into your debt snowball, your debt avalanche, your hybrid method or whatever it is that you're doing. So step two is to establish a separate savings account for your emergency funds. They have to be accessible, but you don't want your emergency funds mixed in with your everyday money. So that's why we don't keep it in a checking account. You can keep it in the same financial institution as your checking account, but if you want to keep it in an online bank, that's fine too. The important thing is to keep your, this emergency fund money separate from other savings goals and to keep it separate from your everyday checking account. You don't want the money to be commingled um, so that you don't know what's for emergencies and what is for a down payment on a car or a new phone or what have you. So you may have other savings accounts for down payments, for tech, for vacation or travel. Keep all of that money in separate accounts. And by the way, if you're banking at an institution that charges you for each additional account that you have, consider switching to a credit union or at least a more friendly bank that would like to have your business by having multiple accounts. You can also keep your emergency money or any long-term savings account money in something called a high yield savings account. And they are basically what they sound like, which is they earn more interest uh, than a traditional savings account at a bank or credit union. So you can find a list of high yield savings accounts in the resources in the show notes. I will eventually put together a whole page for you. But even if you just Google high yield savings account, you'll find a number of good recommendations from places like Nerd Wallet or The Balance or even uh, Jen and Jill over at Frugal Friends Podcast. They have recommendations as well. So step three is to make this a priority. You may have some debt hanging around and you're desperate to get rid of it. I totally understand. I have debt to get rid of as well. Then there's other goals. You, you're saving for your kid's college or you're saving for retirement or the down payment or a house on, or you, you're going to need a new car soon. I get all that. But focus on one thing at a time because if you don't have a buffer in case of emergencies, you may find yourself going right back into debt and that's not a place where we want to be if we don't have to be. Because I guarantee you that that last minute debt is going to cost you way more than if you had the money set aside to begin with. Now, while you're in the middle of building that savings account, that emergency savings account, you may have to bridge that gap between the cost of your emergency and the cost of um, and the balance in your emergency savings account with a temporary loan or with your credit card or something like that. I totally understand that. Like life happens. You're not going to go from zero to a hundred or zero to a fully funded savings account in a month. Most people won't. So there may be some things that come up in between in the meantime that you need to maybe pull from a sinking fund or empty out your envelopes. I've done it. Um, I've seen like Jordan budgets. She does it. She's had to do it. And that's, we know that we can always refill those envelopes. We can always refill those sinking funds, but you've got to make this a priority because if you find yourself back in debt, like you, like you erased all your progress, you're going to feel like crud. And that's not a good way to keep going with your finances. So, like I said, if you're still in debt, 
pay only the minimum amount on your debt while you are building this starter emergency fund. And then once you've saved at least one month of expenses, resume the debt snowball or the debt avalanche or a hybrid of the two. Step number four, where to get the money for your emergency savings account. Because I've been talking all this big game about saving for emergencies, but I never told you where to get the money. So the first thing you're going to do is start with your budget. You are going to figure out in your budget how much you can save each month just by ordering your money and telling it what to do. Whether you have a one month, three month, six month, or 12 month goal, you need to determine how much you can save each month. And yes, some people do feel much better with a 12 month emergency savings account. No shame in that game, okay? <laughs> so now that you know how much you can save just through budgeting, now you're going to look at cutting your expenses and increasing your income. So most of us can stand to dine out a bit less for a month or so while we get this emergency fund straight. Some of us dine out way too much, myself included, <laughs> okay? And some of you really don't dine out at all, but, you're, but your money is going somewhere else. So in budgeting, you will figure out where your money is going and how you can um, more accurately cut those expenses and then increase your income. So you can bring in more money by doing things like working extra hours at work, maybe if you're hourly. Um, if you're on a salary, it may be time to ask for a raise. If you are self-employed, you may just need to sign a couple more clients or raise your prices because a lot of us don't charge enough. You could take on freelance work. You can sell things around the house. There's a whole lot of creative things you can do. In fact, I wrote an article on the Savvy Budget Girl blog recently on uh, 11 legit ways to make at least $100 a day. So make sure you head over to the blog and check that out at SavvyBudgetGirl.com. And again, you don't have to do these things forever, just until you've funded your emergency fund to the point that you need to at various stages of your financial journey. Step number five, use the emergency fund. Yeah, that's what it's there for. It's there for emergencies. Don't be afraid to use it. Don't be afraid to use it for the thing you saved it for. Because if this was a car down payment, you wouldn't balk at using it as the down payment for a car. But for some reason, we get really weird about um, really weird about the the need to use emergency funds for emergencies. And if you watch, if you're watching this live or listening to this live uh, or on the replay. I want you to go back and hear what I'm saying again. Use the emergency fund for emergencies. I'll tell you a story. The other day, yeah, today's Tuesday. So the other day, my husband wanted to drive his classic 1970 Beetle to church. I was a little dubious about this because every time I got in that car, it broke down. So I decided to drive my own vehicle to church as well. Well, my poor husband almost made it to church in Herbie, which is what we call the car. And he actually broke down a few blocks away from the church. So we had to push the car in neutral over to a gas station and have it towed back home. Now we live 35 minutes from the church. So we're not talking about a short tow. That we, cause we knew that if we could at least get it home, we could have time to work on it later. Well, when they told us how much the tow cost, because this particular car wasn't covered under our roadside assistance, it was $316.40, exactly the amount we had in savings at the time, because other things had been going on and we'd been, <laughs> we had to use our savings account for other money, for other things. So we had the amount, thanks to God that we had the amount that we needed to get this car towed back home. But I don't feel bad about using the money because that's exactly what it was sitting there for. It was sitting there for an emergency. And I would 
say that having your car towed back home is an emergency. So that's what happened with us recently. And so while it may set you back to zero for a while, now that you know how to build this emergency fund, you can build it up faster than if you were just starting with no knowledge of how to do this. You've already seen that you can build this up. You've already seen that you can do the work. All you have to do is do it again to get your emergency fund back to where it should be or where you want it to be. <sighs> to get started with the cash envelope system of budgeting, I want you to click or tap on the screen for the next video, but that's all I've got for you guys. This is has been a fun episode of Savvy Budget Girl. I'm going to take some questions um, if you're on the live stream, but remember that information in this podcast is intended for education and entertainment purposes only. Please seek the advice of a qualified professional for your specific situation. Now, Queen B, I know you're at work and I just wanted to let you know, I saw your comment and yes, this live will be available for the replay pretty much as soon as it's done processing after I end the live stream. If you want, you can also go and listen to the podcast version of this audio at a later time, which is called Savvy Budget Girl. It is available on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, all the places, um, iHeartRadio, which apparently is where I've been getting a lot of downloads lately. So thank you for joining me while you're at work. I really appreciate that. Um, Christianity Explained, Barry, man, it's good to see you. Thank you for joining me on this live stream. Um, your live streams are a ton of fun. So guys, if you want to, guys and gals, if you want to hear some good theology, some good discussions about Christianity, head on over to the channel, Christianity Explained. Barry goes live each week with book reviews, interviews, and all kinds of things. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Again, click or tap the screen for the next video, and I will see you guys later. Bye.